Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This next lesson is on Intro to Animation. The Intro to Animation is about the bouncing ball. Uh, most traditional animation, there's always what they call the bouncing ball exercise in, in 2D animation. And they also try it in 3D animation as well. We're going to try that today. We're doing this because what happens most of the time in animation or in After Effects, a lot of beginners they get very uh, stressed out. There's a long learning curve uh, when it comes to keyframing. And I want to kind of take away the, the fears of animation. We're just going to kind of have fun with this. We're going to experiment. You don't have to do it perfect. If you're a perfectionist like me, you'll want to try to do it perfect. But after years of, of working in After Effects, uh, we're just going it, it to, it's not worth the stress and the anxiety of trying to do it exactly what needs, you know, the exact animation has to appear a certain way or exit a certain way. We're just going to have fun with this. You, you don't have to do it exactly like me. So let's just jump into After Effects here. So what I've done is I've created some exercises here in different stages. So for instance, here's, here's the, the bouncing ball. It even has a sound effect. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you here. You can hit Command plus or minus. It resizes for you. So here we go. We kind of do another RAM preview on that. It's kind of on a loop here. So we don't have to do it exactly like this. In fact, let's get used to animating this way. We're going to pull back in our view here at 50% most of the time because we want to see all the information outside of here. When we're keyframing the ball, for instance, when I have the ball selected, here's the path. So again, we're going to do this in different stages. So for instance, here is an actual composition. I put a sound effect in here. I even marked the actual uh, keyframe here where we actually see the sound effect. If I open up this sound file, that's where it happens. So let's ignore that for the moment. So we have something that's kind of set up for us so we can get right into it. So here's our ball with no animation. All the properties are, are uh, empty right now. We haven't turned on any of the, any of the actual stopwatches for our keyframing yet. I just want to like talk you through this and have some fun here. Remember we don't have to be perfect. We're just playing with keyframes here. So if I take this ball, we have a, a, a little uh, ground plane I create with a solid here. I even put an effect on there, like a gradient. In After Effects they call a gradient uh, like a ramp effect, which we'll get into later. So we don't have to worry about that. Now let's lock this for now. We have kind of a ground plane to work with. Let's even lock our sound effect here. So we're going to kind of just move this around a bit. When I select this ball, even if I select this layer here, it activates our, our ball layer. So you can see how we're just going to, basically we're going to move it from here to here, and then it's going to move out of the frame. So for the first stage, we're going to stay in ball comp 1 here, ball 0, 1. When we get to ball two here, it's going to have a basic movement there with just three keyframes here. So you, as you can see, I'm going to walk it through frame by frame using page down. And it's just going in and out of the frame. So here's our point of impact here. You can see it's really just if I were to turn off the ground plane here, it's just going down to the bottom here. We're just kind of creating the illusion of a bounce here. And it's okay, it's, it's a little slow. You know, if we wanted to speed things up, we would just, you know, move in our keyframes, squeeze them together. It's a little faster. Let's not worry about that right now. I'm going to undo these hitting uh, Command Z. If I keep hitting Command Z, it keeps going to my undos here. So, 
stage three, we're going to try a little, we're going to add more to this. We're going to, each stage, one through five, you know, two, we just had basic keyframes. Now, in stage three, we're going to add scaling. We're going to get a little bit of a squash and stretch, which is an old 2D traditional animation term. Now, my background is in comic books and traditional animation. When they told me I had to learn After Effects at one of the studios, I thought, there's no way I'm going to learn this. It's like getting into the cockpit of a 747 airplane, not knowing how to fly and saying, fly this plane. Well, we're going to learn how to fly. I guarantee you. So just give yourself a nice long learning curve. Pat yourself on the back once in a while. We're going to take this in stages. So if we just learn the ball trick, even if you're farther along in animation and you're, you're in the intermediate, advanced course, still always go back to the ball. When in doubt, just do the ball. The bouncing ball trick. If you can animate a ball doing that, you can animate anything, I guarantee you. So that's, that's we're adding each level, we're adding a new property here. So in here we have position and scale. And in stage four, we're adding a little bit of rotation. See the ball kind of spins out, spins in. And then in five, we get real fancy we have all kinds of keyframes going on here. But you, but you can kind of see it's not that complicated, you know. So let's start with stage one. We basically have a blank canvas, so to speak. So let's kind of work through this. So we're going to, this is kind of the, the um, I've already set up our little render bar here for about two seconds. So if your bar isn't like this, why don't you set that? Why don't you go up to two seconds here? You can see this here in our timeline or over here. You can kind of page one. Now, if you don't have enough of your timeline here showing, let's do that. Go to Command K, Comp Settings, and add more time. Like I have, you know, 49 seconds here. It could be 50. The reason I do that is because I want to zoom in tight when I'm animating. And if your composition is set exactly at two seconds, I'll, I'll show you. If this was set for two seconds, then I would get exactly two seconds in my timeline, which is fine, but I can't really squeeze in there like I'd like to. Because when I render out the movie eventually, I could then just set my render points for the two seconds. Even though I have 50 seconds, I'm just going to render out two seconds of that 50 seconds. So, let's undo that. Let's have our comp go back to the 49 seconds there. So now I can kind of zoom in here. So let's get started. So, so using, using plus or minus is really helpful to kind of zoom in, zoom out of my timeline, kind of stretch it out. So I'm going to stretch it out. I only need these items showing here. Source name, stretch, all the values here, switches and modes. So here's the ball. So you can kind of see here, we have two seconds we're working with. I'm going to hit B for beginning with my render frame here, my render queue. And I'm going to go to my two second mark and I'm going to hit N. Now, if you don't have a, a number two showing here, that just kind of represents two seconds for me. To get that marker up here, you're just going to hit, I'll delete this marker now, start over here, delete this marker. And I'm going to hit Shift 2, and there's a marker. That just kind of represents two seconds for me. That way I can kind of get an idea of the sort of playground I have to work in here. So, you have this, this amount of space to work with. So if you kind of go to your midpoint here, let's go to one second in and we will set we're going to set keyframes here this gives you an idea so if you want to set a half point there that's fine you could even set a marker there if you want in your timeline and you could hit your asterisk symbol and it goes right on the ball layer there which is fine that's kind of your midpoint um, but I want to get too technical with this exercise I want to stay very loose and organic so to speak I just want you to see how simple it is to move keyframes around with just the most basic properties here. So here's about our midpoint. So right now, let's go back to the home. 
I always call it the home. Hit the home key or just move your cursor to the beginning of the timeline. And let's get this ball out of here. So you kind of have to like pre-vis, pre-visualization. You want to kind of kind of imagine how this is going to go in. We're going to start up here, we're going to bounce here, and we're going to go out. So let's set our keyframes. We're just going to turn on our position keyframe. We're going to turn that on here. And we're going to move our cursor here, our timeline indicator, or time indicator. I call it cursor. So we're at the half point here. Uh, we can even move our, I actually set a marker on the sound effect, let's unlock that, where it starts. A lot of sound effects, you know, they have a little bit of a, a pre-roll time here. So let's move this marker here. If we hold down shift, it'll snap to the marker. We might even, well, we're going to fuss and move stuff around later on. For now, let's lock that. That's our sound effects. So we're back to our ball layer. Are you having fun? This should be fun. So we're going to move our ball right here, and we're going to move our, our time indicator up to the two second mark, and we are going to move our ball out of frame. Okay? Now, let's just play that back. We're going to hit zero in our numeric keypad, do a little RAM preview. It kind of has kind of the glide out. That's because a lot of times After Effects will, by default, set up an, um, what they call an audio bezier uh, keyframe. We're going to take care of that right now. So here's something you really want to get used to doing. Now, we only have one uh, value turned on. That's our position keyframe. So you're going to use control a lot. For me, when I'm working, I like to have my keyboard to the left side over here, and my left hand is almost always on the keyboard. I'm always hitting, using my, my thumb for uh, command, option, or control, and shift a lot of the times. So in this case, when we're keyframing, you want to have your thumb almost always on the keypad holding down control. So the reason I say that because if, like, we have a, a keyframe selected. See, the thing is, I'm working on a, a Cintiq monitor, and you don't have to work this way. You could have an old computer, for that matter, and with a mouse. I'm using a pen here. but when I first learned After Effects, I had a mouse, but you're always going to be, you know, clicking keyframes, and it gets very um, tedious and cumbersome. You're kind of down here. You, got, you can have, we just have three keyframes. Can you imagine something like this? Now, a lot of the properties are turned on, and you're just seeing all these dots and keyframes and things like that. So when you first start out, we're going to keep it simple, but you're going to be selecting things a lot. So quick keys are great. So we're going to go back to the control key, and we're going to click... And what happens if you click control on these keyframes themselves, you pull up this little menu here. This same menu is up in the file menu up here in effect and animation. So we want to spend as little time as possible when you're keyframing up here because it gets very, you got to move your hand up here and back down here because when you're in the trenches of keyframes, you want to stay in here. So using control a lot of the times will get you the same menus. Um, so you can go to keyframe assistance. And you're going to be using ease in, ease out of keyframes. Um, if we want to see what the keyframe is doing, just kind of assess it. If we hit keyframe interpolation while holding down control, it pops up this menu here. And right now, this keyframe is set for audio bezier. Let's turn that just to linear. We'll be doing this a lot. So click, can, uh, click OK. Let's check this one here. I think you can actually click all these at once. That depends. There we go. Keyframe interpolation, audio bezier. There. Now what happened is now you can see our path here, our motion path has changed. It's just it's going to be a linear path. There's no gliding or curving, so to speak. So let's do a RAM preview of that. Now the ball just goes directly to its impact point and straight out. Now you're probably thinking, well, it's kind of slow. It is slow, but we just we can always speed things up later. We're just trying to get our positioning correct. So if I want to speed these up, see the gap of time there? All we're going to do, here's our point of impact. This is just the spatial interpolation we talked about earlier. So all we really have to do is move keyframes now. You are the controller. You control your destiny, your universe. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to move this in. 
Now it goes out faster. Now you think, well, why is it going slow and it goes out fast? Well, you can move these work backwards, and you can move these properties here. And now we're just working with this gap of time. So you can go even faster. So, the, so the, the more you move the keyframes, whether you move them, squeeze them in, goes faster. Squeeze them out, goes slower. So watch this. Let's go even faster. It's a little fast. Just depends on um, what you're doing here. You can decide if you want your ball to go slower or faster. So obviously the, the sound effect is off. But if we go back to ball five for a second, you can see that our animation kind of ends around a second over here. Whereas right now we have it at when the ball leaves, it's at around 15. It's less than a second here. So it just depends on how you want to do it. So let, there's no right or wrong way in this. So let's just play a little more. I'm going to back it up a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Let's go to two seconds for now. But for now, let's just keep it slow. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add we're going to stay in ball one, but you can kind of see what we're going to do here, a little preview, is we're going to check out the motion path now. So let's go back to ball one. We're going to stay in there. Uh, let's understand how these handles work. So we have our ball selected, and here's our path. You know, we could see that we're going to go from left to impact to out. And when you select each one of these, just play with these a bit. And if you mess it up, it's okay. We're just, you can hit undo. We just want to get comfortable with this. Now, if you're in Photoshop, you've used the pen tool, or if you're an illustrator, the pen tool, you're using a lot of the Bezier handles. It's the same thing. So it might be familiar to you to a certain degree. If you select a keyframe, right now we're just going in and out. You can move this here. Let's say move this down a little bit more. It's gonna, we're going to squash and stretch later on. So if I were to go to this keyframe here, I could change the, the path of the ball. Let's do a quick RAM preview for a second. So let's make our ball a little higher. So you're always going to be moving your canvas around when you're working. I know I'm kind of twitchy and fast, but it's because we're working all the time and it's like you're always going to be moving things around because we're not, we really can't get too attached to the view of how we see things and fully rendered. In fact, I usually work at half resolution. I say we can't get too attached because we're always going to be, you know, zooming out to see if the path is correct. Like I say, I wanted to come way over here. So I'm going to be zooming in and out quite a bit. I use these arrow keys here or I can use command plus or minus. So let me put this back here, Command Z. So I'm going to have this up here. If I hit, hold down my space bar, I always get their little hand tool. I can move my canvas around. I can also pull this down here. I just, I'm, you're always going to be fighting for space. I guarantee you. I don't care how big your monitor is, you're going to always fight for space, working space here. So go back to this layer here. So I want to make this path looks something like this path here. Go back to ball one. Okay, so let's play this. So it's basically just going in and out in a linear fashion. So what we want to do, now that you see the difference between linear and Bezier, is let's just turn these back into Bezier keyframes for a second. And I'll show you why. So we want to select all these keyframes. Hold down keyframe interpolation here. And we're going to go to linear. And then we're going to drop them down to Bezier. Click OK. So now we have our handles. Again, it's so, it's so much like uh, Photoshop and the pen tool or Illustrator with the pen tool. So now we have our handles, which is great. And what these handles do is let's say you want to have our path kind of bounce in. You grab the handle, and you know they're they're a little touchy, so you can pull them out. 
push them in. I'll show you what happens here. So we've only we've only really altered the first keyframe here. So now what we want to do is jump over. We can actually uh, edit the second keyframe just by grabbing this handle here. See, it's a little much. The arch is kind of high. Let's do something like this. Great. Okay, let's try this other one over here. Now, if you hold down Option or Command, it can edit them, kind of an endless curve thing. Let's not do that now. Just want to give you that option there. So let's go back over here without holding anything, any buttons down on the side over here. And we're just going to edit this one here. Maybe edit this here. Let's see what we got. Yeah. So we can make it more realistic or more cartoony. Let's go down a little more here. We could even bring down our actual ball. Play that. So if you're with me still, you've just animated your first bouncing ball. Congratulations. Okay, that's great. So look what you've done here. We just have three keyframes. That's all we have. Look how great it looks. So what we're going to do next, let me just open up ball two. Same thing here. So we're going to keep we're going to keep working within the ball one comp. So in ball three, I'll just show you this here. All we're going to do is add some scaling. Has a little bit of a squash and stretch. So here, let me walk you through that frame by frame to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing here. So if you page down, here's our keyframe area. You can see what's happening. Here's your roadmap. Back up, so here's your point of impact. Now in this keyframe here, and then right in the middle, it's going to squash down a bit. What we do is we uncheck the scale chain here, and we're going to scale it down here. And then it's going to scale to this, and we're going to go out. So let's do that real quick. So back over to ball one. So let's go to our, our, the middle of our comp here again, and let's turn on scale. So now we have scale activated. Now we have position and scale. So we're going to set a keyframe there for now. Go back to the home. Another keyframe there. And the end of our sequence here. Now the reason the two is there, by the way, if you hit, now that we have a two marker here, if we hit the number two, it goes right to the two. For instance, if we set, if we hit shift, three, for instance, or any, any of the numbers up to zero, uh, we can, if I were to hit two, two will go to the end of the sequence, three goes to the middle. It depends on how you set your numbers. This comes in handy when you're, um, to delete these, you want to hit down control, delete this marker. This comes in handy when you're working on a project and you just don't want to try to find that one area. So you can set a marker, you know, and hit the, hit the shift or whatever number you want, and just hit that actual number. Um, good. So, okay, so we're back to this. We have position and we have scale. That's pretty powerful right there. So, right now if we hit play, it's not doing anything yet. <laughs> so let's add some keyframes. So we have our keyframes set here, beginning, middle, and end. Now let's just back up a couple frames, hitting page up. You're always going to be using page up and page down. So let's just back up two frames, and let's hit position and scale. And let's go ahead two frames from the midpoint, one, two, and two more keyframes there. So here's our point of impact. Let's go to the middle here. Let's even zoom in more, hitting plus here. So here, because this is our point of imp impact, let's squash this thing. So let's uncheck our scale button there reason we do that is because if we leave it checked and try to scale the ball, it'll do it, but it's nice to uncheck it. 
because then you could kind of see um, we're, we're scaling the width and this way or we can scale the height so in this case let's squash this down here again we can make this more cartoony you don't have to have yours exactly like mine we just play in here so right now we're we just squashed it so let's just play this I like to play things back over and over almost like an animator where he's flipping pages on a flip book you want to you just want to stay in that little pocket and, and play it back and forth see if you got it right so play it back not bad in fact I like it very simple gives it some bounce there so good all right you still with me you having fun isn't this fun you made a ball come to life you know so let's uh, the next stage would definitely be turning on rotations let's go to uh, I'm going to show you this little preview of ball, the ball four exercise see just that little rotation makes a difference so let's go back to our comp here and let's turn on let's zoom out a bit actually in this case let's zoom in so let's add rotation you turn that on and let's move this key see that keyframe at was added right where I turned it on don't panic just move this keyframe over or just hit command Z and turn it off <laughs> so let's let's go to the home key now we're home let's turn on rotation and let's go to the midpoint set a keyframe here and let's go to the end here and set a keyframe there um, in fact while we're at it why don't we add the other keyframes in those positions too so let's turn on scale and set a keyframe over here for rotation uh, you know what let's leave that blank let's, let's keep it simple all right so let's play it back again get familiar with it so let's go to our midpoint here and let's give this a little bit of rotation I think it's better to start the keyframe rotation right about here for now so let's just give it a little bit of a, a turn so you can kind of see that it's turning on the impact which looks kind of strange it doesn't look too bad actually so when you start going page up and page down now you've sort of become an official animator because this is what it's all about every frame counts so here we go Got a little bit of rotation in there so if you want to spin more of the rotation let's set more keyframes so let's set a keyframe right before the impact point and let's give it more of a rotation so you're going to pull your value here let's go to like 95 see what happens again a lot of this is trial and error as you can see there you go now if we were to set a keyframe around here somewhere in the middle right here we can actually spin that ball more let's try that so we should probably delete this keyframe that way it gets a spin so it's only going to spin to that one point so again sometimes you try something go huh I don't like that too much so you can just delete these keyframes let's go back again so let's just keep this go to our midpoint and give the the ball more revolutions here see what happens that's kind of spinning the other way on the way out but that's okay for now okay so let's go up here a few keyframes and let's spin a little more to the right now another thing you can do too is we can use our rotation tool um, I'm, I'm constantly using the move tool so I just know if I hit the letter V like it's like second nature W goes to your rotation tool you can grab you can rotate your elements 
by that same tool here. Okay, let's go back to VTool, move, and see what this does. Not bad. It's kind of spinning the opposite way, but I kind of like it. Okay, so in five, we have a little bit more of a exaggerated cartoony path going on there. So let's try to do that. In fact, let me walk you through five real quick. So if I just go frame by frame, there's point of impact, we have a spin. You kind of see it stretching here. It's almost like a vertical stretch. And it kind of snaps back into its, its original scale. So when you're paging through things like this, frame by frame, you know, they don't always look right. Don't get too obsessed with that. It's okay. It's really uh, what matters is playing it back. If it looks good to your eye, you're on the right track. If it looks natural. So let's go back and try to do that. So we're back in ball one. And this is where you just kind of want to go frame to frame. Let's shrink down our timeline a bit. If you need some more room here, you can move your menu bars here. Now, let me see. Walk through here. Spin. Squash. We're rotating out. So I'm going to actually delete this keyframe that rotates out. I want to keep, I'm going to keep rotating the same way. Play that back. Give it more of a spin here. I can actually, while I'm actually in this mode here, right, the, the ball is off frame, off the screen, I can still rotate that. So don't get too attached to the actual images. You, you can kind of, if you start getting used to seeing their, their guiding boxes, their bounding boxes, they'll make things go a little faster. So you can turn it here, see what that does. Very nice. Okay, so let's get that cartoony squash squash effect here. Okay, so let's back up, get, get, get back into the pocket here. We're going to go page up, page down, back and forth. So I'm going to start creating more keyframes. So I'll go here, add another rotation. Here I want it to be point of impact. I want it to really be flat, almost like a pancake. Let's see what that does. And I'm going to go back to my move tool. I'm going to rotate this. So I'm toggling back and forth between V and W, V and W. You're going to do that a lot. Okay. Let's grab that here. Let's see what that does. Play it back. It's getting there. Okay, so now when it exits, I want that sort of stretched out look. So what I do is like, if I like the way it looks here at this point, I'll just set some keyframes. That way it just kind of holds that that view or that uh, more or less that, that motion, that path, that scale, all the values are right there. So they're gonna stay that way. It's gonna go to that at the midpoint here of the path. I'm going to back up a little bit. And I can just exaggerate this. Like right here, I want it to be that Bugs Bunny wacky stretch effect here. So let's play it back. Nice. Now it snaps into place. Almost a little too, looks kind of funky right here, <laughs> for lack of better words. So to fix that, Maybe this should happen either sooner or later. It's hard to tell. I kind of like that too. You just never know. So I'm gonna I'm gonna back it off a little bit. I want to slow that squash effect down. I want it to snap back to its normal. I could actually see what happens if I pull this to the right more. Not bad. So keep in mind too, we still have to kind of squash this all together more, make it a little faster. So let's do that now, see what happens. So 
We have our two second mark here. Here's the space we've been working in. Let's stretch it out a bit. Now, here's our midpoint. So let's just grab all these keyframes and just carefully drag them over to the right, to the left a bit here to speed things up. And we're going to then drag the back end of it a bit. And let's see what we have so far. Don't worry about the sound effects right now. Nice. This should still come in sooner. Exit sooner. Great. Now this squash and stretch thing is still a little snappy. So I might want it to do that almost all the way out of the frame. So what happens if we were to delete these keyframes? Let's fix our path here. Hmm, not bad. So I, I still think it should exit a little faster. So this really determined, these keyframes determine my exit here. So all I'm doing is just moving these in tighter. Not bad, it's a little snappy. Now we could even add a little more rotation to this. Use my rotation tool. <laughs> it still looks a little funny with the stretch there. So let's, why don't we do this? Let, let's have this stretch come in sooner. And let's go back to its original state sooner. So the scale, this keyframe over here, this is really the original scale of the basketball. Whoops, wrong keyframe. That happens a lot. I'm glad I did that. You never know you, when you're grabbing a keyframe, just get in the habit of looking across the row here. And I was in the position keyframe thinking I was in the scale keyframe, but it's kind of a good idea to look over to the left all the time. So grab this, move it in sooner. There you go. So you don't have to have all your keyframes lined up perfectly. Remember, we're just having fun, make mistakes. They're good. Uh, so, this keyframe was lined up with the position keyframe, and this was lined up with uh, the, the rotation scale and the position were lined up together. They don't have to stay together. You can tweak things, move them to the left, move them to the right. It just depends on the, the effect you're trying to achieve. So I want just the scaling to come in sooner. So I'm going to hit zero. There you go. All righty. You are now an official animator. Thank you for watching Educator.com. I look forward to seeing you on our next lesson.